Greetings ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 72 Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Sovlin, United Nations Fleet Command Date, Standardized Human Time, November 27th, 2136 The Federation ambushed fleet moseyed forward with a faint semblance of strategy. The enemy were striking in groups of four, so the Predators couldn't pick off lone vessels, but their superior would. Our opponents were also coordinating attacks on targets, aiming to gun down hapless humans with deadly crossfires. The standard UN vessel could be ripped apart from both sides before they knew what had them. The leading Terran ships had their shields obliterated in a few seconds. The plasma onslaught decimated exposed hulls. Any ordinary species would choose a desperate retreat and regroup in an advantageous location. But instead, there was an icy calm across the breach, at least from the human crew. The Fisen on comms was whinnying in terror, and the Vendel advisors were crying, and the Yodel at my station. He was doing his job without issue. That was a surprise. Deploying tactical drones stay on the move, a predatory voice on radio barked. The spacecraft carriers had limited supply of autonomous craft, which were ter Terran novelty. Unfortunately, most drones were lost during the defense of Earth. Restocking the reserves was a challenge, with the manufacturing delays. Since humans were the only ones who possessed the innovation and weren't keen on giving away their secrets, their newfound allies couldn't help on that front. The Predators trust no one, not Trudy. I can't say I blame them. But even the few dozen drones that we had at our disposal were a useful tool. They could undertake the riskiest maneuvers without any concern for life and limb. The enemy was likely blindsided by the unmanned vessels, so they weren't equipped to deal with them. Manual targeting was a requisite, because the automatons were much smaller than standard ships. The drones twirled through the sky, changing direction on a dime. There was no worrying about whether inertia dampeners would keep up. With no crew aboard, pinning down at nimble craft proved to be a challenge for prey operators. In real time, the Federation lobbed plasma at the inbound contacts, but the unmanned vehicle simply veered off at 90 degree angles. The enemy hesitated, uncertain as to how to proceed. Captain Monaghan nodded to the weapon station. Ready your armor-piercing missiles. Wait for the drones to land a few punches and fire. Our spacecraft cruised ahead, falling in beside two lightship gunships that appeared to be tilfish impounds. The Terrans had outfitted the seized vessels with kinetic turrets on the hull. I wasn't sure what impact the weaponry would have against shields. The humans should know efficacy was why plasma dominated space, despite the higher energy demands. The drones coasted onward, anticipating Federation blows through predictive abilities. Perhaps the humans programmed algorithms to monitor power output and radio chatter. These robotic creations were a marvel of engineering regardless. But everyone once said about the predators, nobody could doubt their wicked intelligence. Our handful of automated craft flew circles around their larger forces, drawing within striking distance. The craft swooped in across the Federation's front lines and unloaded from close range. Detonations buffeted the metal exteriors, crippling shields. With inhuman response times, the drones transitioned to a deluge of kinetics and mini missiles. Hey, Gojit, find us some targets, Tyler snarled. I monitored the sensor data, finding a ship groupings with the most sustained damage. The Federation army was hurling munitions at the drones in a blind frenzy. The enemy hoped the deluge would cut off the escape. Brute force proved to be enough to whittle down our unmanned charge by a significant margin. We had just a few seconds to capitalize on the discombobulation. Scanning the readout, my eyes turned to a Federation bunch just out of range. This enemy squadron had lost a ship to the drones already, judging by the hefty debris. The remaining trio was slowed by an aged bomber with an inefficient drive signature. That meant that they couldn't pull off a sudden movements. The lack of evasive abilities offered an easy mark for the humans. I highlighted those three ships on the map. There, you take out the faster escorts with a one-two punch, then that bomber is sitting prey. Good call. We're saving the weapon station a lot of guesswork, Tyler responded. The census officer passed along the information before turning back to me. There was a gleam of interest in his eyes, which was something I didn't want to encourage. Perhaps I was doing a little too well with my orders for an alien. Our strike force converged on that target, accelerating with malicious intent. The UN's adopted gunships brought up our flanks. Well, we lined up the Federation cruiser. Our nemesis spotted our target lock and adjusted their course in an evasion attempt. 
We send missiles barreling towards them all the same. The trio deployed copious interceptors, leaving no chance of our warheads slipping through. As we reloaded for another missile volley, the Ewan gunship pair swooped in to ramp up the pressure. Our Terran allies got near enough for a closer look, then added their own explosives to the mix. The Federation took those out with no problem as well. The human loves for bombs was well known to the galaxy, so that sparked an inclusion of a hefty stock of countermeasures. Peculiarities on the censored readings drew a second glance from me. The gunship's missiles were counteracted, but the Federation ships were hedged within the blast radius. The shield should have absorbed the negligible hit, yet according to my screen, the shield capacity had vanished. Upon their destruction, the human explosives seemed to have generated a magnetic field. Captain Monaghan beckoned to the weapon station. Shields are down, likely temporarily. Hit them with kinetics now. The UN gunships must have been expecting the shield collapse too. Their turrets flickered to life, peppering the enemy hulls with bullets. The kinetics broke through the Federation armor, like it was wallpaper being peeled away. Our vessels contributed with well-placed strikes to the engine compartments. The hostiles were reduced to snag, trapped in the wake of their own tribe failures. What just happened? I breathed. Anzo wagged his tail, watching the viewport. Ha! Those feckers got silent, but plainly we disrupted their shields with magneto resistance. My gaze darted over to Samantha, who bobbed her shoulders in confusion. How did an uplift understand the concept of Federation never thought of? How? It was beyond my own scientific knowledge, and I was a seasoned veteran. That uneducated yodel might be parroting what the humans said. The predators just rendered shields obsolete, which meant bullets were relevant again. Because of Earth's bloody history, human militaries already excelled at kinetics. This development increased my confidence that we could tackle the larger fleet. It would be surprising if the Federation could recover from the shock of our strategy. I think I'm looking at the most advanced military in the galaxy. I mused with a tinge of fear. Yet humanity are in their space-faring infancy. I chewed at my claws. This is all new to me, Carlos. Sam, did you know that this was going to happen? I knew they picked a flight that with the wrong people, Samantha chimed in. The Colchians are the ringleaders. They wanted this. They are going to be the first to pay. Carlos snorted. Funny thing is, the aquatic bastards don't have much choice but to fight. They can't play both sides anymore. That plan, to put us against the greys and mop up the winner, is toast thanks to Selene. No, I'm talking about the shields, you bloodthirsty beasts. That little, uh, magneto bomb or whatever, it's revolutionary. Yeah, the ugly fecks aren't damage sponges anymore, Tyler interjected, uninvited. We can one-hit them and not have to recharge that blasted plasma gun. Never liked the concept myself. I snapped my head back to the viewport, giving the officer a cold shoulder. Out of the, my peripheral vision, it was plain to see that his hand curled into a fist. The predator was seething from my continued insults. His company may have been a peace offering. This tension was all my fault, but I didn't know what to do about our mutual acquaintance. Carlos jabbed an elbow to my shoulder, shaking his head in warning. I mimicked the human's non-committal gesture by rolling my shoulders back. The male guard hissed in displeasure before waving a hand dismissively. I wish Tyler would keep this all business, since there was a battle to focus on. Our craft pivoted towards the heart of the action as Monaghan coordinated each station like a symphony conductor. Everyone piped up with input when prompted, and the humans put their hunting instincts to good use. The predators sensed weakness, which meant that they wouldn't give the Federation a minute to breathe. The enemy was falling back towards the ambush site, condensing into a panic ball. I squinted at the sensors. The enemy just dropped about 10% of their fleet. The anti-shield mechanism is proving catastrophic. Tyler scowled. Catastrophic? Catastrophic, sir, I grunted through grit teeth. Retreat is possible. If more imminent losses are in the cards, we need to inflict serious damage fast. Captain's already working on that. Your analysis is spot on, but crap. You're a real hard ass. I bet you're a fun at parties. I don't remember what fun is, or what it's like to be happy. Not since the Arxor ate my family alive while they screamed over a video call. Humans always try to make me talk about my past, so now you know. Hey, settle down. Officer Cordona had nothing to do with that, Samantha hissed. I, I couldn't make myself hang up, but there was nothing I could do. I didn't say anything. Do you know how many times my daughter called my name? Help me, Daddy, please. It hurts. Eck. The pain was still fresh as the day it happened, like a knife cutting through my sternum. Everyone at our station gawked at me, including the feisty yodel in my guards. Tyler was quiet, leaning over his console in thought. 
He scratched his handy hair, perhaps envisioning my story. The hostility ebbed out of his posture, replaced by a pitying frown. Crap, why did I say that? I don't want his pity, and I don't like talking about my losses. Stop thinking about Marcel, you worthless predator. Tears swelled my eyes, and I pressed my paw to my mouth to stifle the choked sobs. After years of keeping it bottled up, Selani's revelation had me losing my mind. I was just like the demons that ate my little girl. Why couldn't I help her if the shared malevolence was true? To top it off, instead of defending innocence in her memory, I had helped the Arxor get a leg up in the war. Carlos gave my neck a soothing pat just above my bristling spines. I told them you needed a psych, Val. You're not well. I agree. I don't know who the hell cleared you for combat when this obvious that you're unfit for duty. Tyler took a deep breath and met my eyes. My condolences for what happened to you, Trudy, but I think it's best that you are removed from this post. I glowered at the officer. I can do my job, and well, helping humans is all I have left. Just skip social sour, and I'll be fine. Damn it. Uh, please, sir. The sandy-haired human turned to the viewport, marching as the Terran fleet charged the enemy. There wasn't time to get replacement for me. Plasma would be flying at us any second. For all my flaws, I was more competent than most aliens. Captain Monaghan even admitted that I was knowledgeable addition to the crew. We need to inflict serious damage. Find us a path to the least resistance into missile range, Tyler decided. Keep an eye on the surviving drones. I wiped the snot from my nose. Thank you, sir. The Federation enemies on screen were retreating, conceding space bit by bit. Our opponents hoped to keep some distance between us with cycles of railgun fire. They knew if we got close enough, they would finish. Despite our recent progress, the direct plasma hit was more than capable of chewing through UN vessel. Keeping human predators at bay was easier said than done. Danger served more as an incentive than a discouragement. My drone force was in tatters, but the remnants limped forward to clear the path. The Terran fleet used them as buffer, distracting the railguns. The automatons were a new variable for the Federation, and those bastards hated the unknown. Therefore, the prey focused on an inordinate amount of fire on the robots. The Mazics were still duking it out with the initial force behind us, churning up carnage around Koa. The predicament was another reason for the UN to expedite the initiative. The humans charged enemy ranks with fervor. A few hostiles began to target the man craft. Once we got too close for their liking, plasma descended in our position at magnificent velocities, with one beam clipping our belly. The ship's floorboards rocked beneath my feet, and the shield struggled to absorb the shave. Propulsion was wonky for a moment, while the fluorescent lights flickered overhead. The Federation must have realized their volley connected with us, because target locks lit up my screen. One enemy's output dipped slightly, which raised my spines. Bank, now! Where are we dead? I roared. Navigation struggled to get our systems responsive again. At Captain Monaghan's order, the humans diverted power to comms, weapons, and most importantly, shields. Our safeguards weren't going to withstand another blast regardless, but it was awful to have all defenses stripped away. Every second, our craft sat idle felt like an eternity. A burst of light zipped across the sky like a lightning bolt, and I squeezed my eyes shut. There was a part of me that was relieved to be on the way out. Stewing in my emotions had become too exhausting. Besides, the world would be a better off without a predator like me. The downside of my imminent demise was the humans that would perish alongside me. Maybe there's an afterlife. Maybe I can see my family again. And so can Sam. Now thrusters sputtered to life, coughing out of the superb plus energy. Our ship lurched to the side with inertial dampness cushioning the sharp turns at by a fraction. We almost veered into an allied ship, who swerved from our path with a second to spare. The plasma beam whisked by our haunches, culminating in a narrow miss. Well, would the sensor station like to command the ship any more unsanctioned orders from my crew? Captain Monaghan chuckled. I drew a shuddering breath. Have your drones and lighter craft faint to the near flank, then bank center at the last moment. The Federation don't react like humans. That was a rhetorical question, though I do like your idea. We could afford to mix up our playbook, uh, keep them on their toes. The human captain huddled over her microphone, though I couldn't tell what she said to our allies. The pack predators were able to act in harmony amidst chaos. Their precision and teamwork were unrivaled. The Terran fleet ran out and coordinated return plasma fire. Ferocious lights shone around us with the radiance of a supernova. 
The Counter-Strike put a muzzle on the Federation's offense for a moment. Hundreds of Terran ships plunged towards their right flank, spitting munitions to sell the maneuver. We had sustained minimal losses to our fleet and still had enough willpower to march ahead. All we needed was for the enemy to commit before we could spring the magnetic field on our troop mark. The cornered prey felt vulnerable on the fringes of their formation. Several vessels reversed course and huddled together for safety as the avalanche of human weaponry continued. There were the faulty instincts at work again. Convinced of the Terran targets, the Federation arranged their fire to push us away from their flank. Throw both gravity missiles we've got at them, and then follow up with a nuclear warhead. After that, spew kinetics at anything that survives, Monaghan barked. The bridge crew leapt to carry out her orders, and re-stabilizing propulsions had us banked sharply. The UN advance hooked back at a retreating angle, and we glided perpendicular to the enemy wall. Weapons readied their new targets before we snaked into the formation's heart. It was easy to picture the startled Federation crew, frozen in terror. A cascade of missiles drove their way into the Nemesis's soft spot. Since the data showed shields faltering and armor disintegrating, the battlefield fell into complete disorder, and the Predators lunged forward for the kill. Kinetic spiced up the shaken ships, and clean plasma dispatched any that limped along. The Federation hurled a few stray munitions at us with a dying whimper. The fools had no time to assess targets, and their fearful state a drunk toddler could aim better. I doubted most of them had close-range weapons or intercepts ready. The humans humiliated the traditional craft, besting them with a savage cunning. With the ambush backfiring so horrifically, our enemies could have but one collective thought, reading from the loss of another thousand vessels. The Federation spacecraft banked away for a full retreat, but the Mazics were still engaged in a fight for their lives behind us. With their laser contingent, the enemy bombers were almost within orbital range. All that was left now was for the humans to secure Koa, restoring order for its rightful inhabitants. End of chapter. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Andrical, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's sister, Ambrose Cattell, and Quantum Wednesday. Thank you very much.